What's up everybody, this is Dr. Deus from Agony Gaming. Today I'm going to be bringing you a damaged focused guardian build. Although it is very damaged focused, it is extremely survivable as well. I've used it very successfully in Fractals 26 Plus and just about every explorable mode dungeon that this game has to offer. So right off the bat we'll go ahead and get going. I'll show you what kind of gear setup I'm using for the build. The gear setup is extremely offensive. Generally with this build you are gearing for offense and you are trading for defense. You know, we'll get to the trait line a little bit later. But you're going to be using all Berserkers gear. You're using this in every single slot. It's power, precision, crit damage gear. You're using it in all your armor, using it in all the weapons, and of course all of your accessories as well. Now as far as the rune setup that I went for with this build, I actually went with Rune of Divinity. It's not the most damage that you can get. I mean the 12% crit damage is great, but the 60 to every single stat, you know, that's buffering your survivability a little bit too. It's kind of a preference thing, and I do know that these are extremely expensive. If you're looking for some other options, you could be using Superior Rune of the Eagle. You could be using Superior Rune of the Pack, which is probably the cheapest option. Or you could just slot in all Ruby Orbs if you just want the maximum amount of power, precision, and crit damage. Now for the weapon choices, I'm using Greatsword. Greatsword is my main damage dealer with this build. You know, it's great because it does the cleave, it's got the whirl, and of course with the superior sigil of strength on there, I have a 30% chance on every time I crit to gain a stack of might for 10 seconds. It ends up being a really great rune setup, or sigil setup, I'm sorry, and uh, ends up being just a powerful weapon overall for this build. Now on to the other weapon. Uh, since they buffed this, I've been using the staff a lot, the Empower. The Empowered takes about half the time that it used to to cast, and the 12 stacks of might is phenomenal in a group setting. So, you know, you're getting the swiftness too, and of course the auto attack is nice just because it's hitting multiple things in front of you, which is advantageous in like TA and things of that nature, where you need to kill a lot of, you know, really low health adds or little bobs and such like that. Now there are going to be fights that you do need to switch out this staff, probably for a more ranged friendly weapon. I of course am using Scepter just because it's pretty much the Guardian's only option when it comes to really long range. Now the Scepter itself is actually a pretty strong weapon. It has the smite which is really good. It, it, it hits a lot more on bombs that are bigger just because it gets out all of its ticks. But uh, for the most part, you know, you're going to be using Scepter on the range fights in Fractals like against the Legendary Grawl Shaman or the Dredge Power Suit. I of course keep a multitude of different weapons on me as a guardian. Um, it's very nice because you have a lot of different utilities depending on what weapon set that you're using. Uh, I've got the hammer, I've got a one-handed sword just for the fractals that you need to like do all the reflect projectiles and all that crap. And of course you've got the shield as well. But for the most part I've been using the staff since they buffed it. It just ends up being a really nice support and uh, buffering people's damage weapons. So it ends up being pretty good so that's what I use for those. We'll move on to the trait line next. The trait line that I use is 5, 0, 15, 30, 20, and 5. Now I'm going to be explaining a couple of the minor ones just because they tend to be extremely important with this and sometimes can be uh, overlooked. I guess we'll go ahead and start in Radiance. You know, obviously you're getting the 5, you're getting the Virtue of Justice every time you activate it, you're blinding opponents. A little bit of extra survivability, which is great. And it works really well in conjunction with the 15. You know, every time you kill a foe, you're getting that renewed so you can continuously blind people depending on how many mobs you have on you and if you're able to kill them. Now for the actual trait point I am using the Signet Mastery which is going to get uh, my Signet to 20% faster recharge. Now the only Signet that I generally use for this is of course the Signet of Resolve. In my opinion it's the best Guardian heal. You get the, you get the most healing from this one and of course you're getting the Condition Removal passive effect. You know there's very few times unless I'm really in trouble that I actually even use this heal just due to the staff and of course the Virtue of Resolve. Onto the Valor Tree. The Valor Tree is toughness and crit damage. So for the first point I'm using Purity. I'm getting the condition removal every 10 seconds. So in addition to my Signet of Resolve, it ends up being really powerful condition removal build. So there are very, very few times that I have problems with conditions. Now onto the next one. The next one you're getting 5% of your toughness as a bonus to precision. As I as I said earlier, this is a very crit oriented build, so you know the more precision you can get is great. And since I generally run about 1300 toughness, you, know, you end up getting 5% of it. It's just a little buffer to up your precision a little bit more, so you're critting more often. On to the last one, this is probably the most important trait of the build. It's altruistic healing. So every time you're applying a boon to either yourself or allies around you, you're getting a little bit of self-healing. 
So it's, it's, it ends up being extremely survivable just because due to the auto attack of the greatsword cleaving and you're hitting multiple opponents, you know, you're getting a lot of stuff there, and I'll explain a little bit later, because it's in the honor tree, uh, why that is so effective. In addition, this is a very powerful shout spec as well. I use a lot of shouts, and of course with the virtues, I am getting boons constantly and applying boons to people around me. So I end up doing a lot of self-healing with altruistic healing. As you can see, I really don't run all that much vitality. I am running a lot more toughness than vitality. I just find that, um, I just find that in my opinion, it ends up working out a lot better because of the self-healing of this build. I can pretty much face tank just about any champion mob without really having to worry about my health pull too much as long as I'm popping my shouts and my blocks correct. Now onto the honor tree. This is an extremely important minor one. The five seconds of vigor, it's going to allow you to dodge more. Again, it works really well in conjunction with this 15 where every single time you're dodging it, you're healing the allies that are around you. And believe it or not, this has actually saved some people that I've run with before, uh, so it shouldn't be underestimated. For the actual first one, I'm obviously using a lot of shouts down on my utility, so the 20% recharge on those is, you know, awesome. So you're getting a little more blocks, you're getting more stability, it just kind of depends on what shouts you like to run. Uh, we'll get a little more into the utilities that I use a little bit later on in the video. Now this is what I was talking about with altruistic healing, the empowering might. So basically every time you're critting, you're going to be putting might on yourself for five seconds and on your allies around you. So with that cleave auto attack, you know, you have a chance to be putting quite a bit of might on your party pretty quickly. And of course you're, you're healing, you know, you're doing the self healing with altruistic healing every single time you put a stack on anybody or yourself. So these are the two that really work together. These are the ones that are going to keep you alive in some of the higher level fractals and of course the harder explorable modes that the game has to offer. And of course we've got the five in virtues which is going to give you might when you pop justice, regeneration on resolve, and courage when you pop that you get protection. So this ends up being pretty good. This works really well with the radiance tree line. You know you're getting the renewal so you can stack up you know three stacks of might if you have a lot of adds on you. So now we'll go in, I'll talk about the utilities that I use. I obviously mentioned my heal earlier when I was talking about the Signet recharge, but uh, this, is my, this is my favorite heal that the Guardians have to offer. I just think the other ones are somewhat lackluster at the moment. Maybe in future patches I might end up changing it, but as of right now, this is the only heal that I will slot on my Guardian regardless of what spec I run. As far as the first utility, I, I love Retreat. Retreat is going to give you the 21 seconds of Aegis and Swiftness. The Swiftness is great if you're doing speed runs, you know, COF Path 1. And the Aegis is great even in those scenarios if you're trying to do speed runs. Those blocks can keep your people out of combat so that you're not slowing down. You're trying to accomplish the dungeon as quick as possible. In addition to that, it's great overall just because the extra Aegis proc. It's basically stopping damage. You, know, you get that free block if you can learn to kind of realize what the boss's animations are, you can end up stopping most of their high damage abilities just by go, you know, cycling through your retreat, your virtue of courage, and so on and so forth. Now the next one is save yourselves. Uh, this is the one that I actually re-slot a lot. Uh, depending on the scenario, wall of reflection, hold the line is great if you're running with a little bit of squishier groups, and of course there are some other ones that uh, can be very situational but uh, can be very powerful as well. But the actual save yourselves ends up being pretty good. It's about, it is the Guardian's only means of getting fury on themselves. So you get a 10 and a half seconds for the extra 20% crit chance. I know with the way that I'm set up right now, I end up at 71% crit. I end up doing pretty good damage when I've got fury on me. You of course obviously get all the other buffs as well. And due to altruistic healing, this can actually be a very powerful self heal as well. Just due to the amount of buffs that you're putting on yourself. So anyways, we'll go ahead and go to the next one, Stand Your Ground. Stand Your Ground is one of my favorites. Obviously it breaks stun, so it ends up being really powerful, but what I've been trying to do lately is realize bosses, bosses mechanics that are going to be knocking back. So I've been pretty successful in this. It ends up being really nice. You know, it's just, it just really sucks when your Mesmer, or if you have a Mesmer in your, in your group, pops a time warp, and then everybody gets knocked down. You know, it's two seconds of wasted time, so you can use this during time warps, you can use it during high damage times, or you can just learn to know when the boss is going to do when he's going to do, look for the animation, and pop this preemptively so that people in your group aren't even getting knocked down. They'll still take the damage, but of course it'll be reflected back to him because it has the retaliation proc on there as well. 
Now, as for the Elite, I'm using Renewed Focus. Renewed Focus is great because it's kind of like your oh crap button, you know, you need to get out. You know, you got the three seconds of invulnerability and you're also, re you know, renewing all of your virtues as well. It can be really good in a single target situation where you just need a little bit more damage. You can get that extra three stacks of might. It can be a great situation against kind of a harder hitting boss where you need an extra block or maybe a little bit more heal. I try to cycle through my virtues before I use this, but there are times where, you know, you just need to use it, you need to get in. You know, you got in, now you need to get out. It happens. So I guess we'll go ahead and go through. I'll run up here, um, kind of just give you a little bit of an example of the damage that this build is capable of doing. This is only a level 79 hatchling. Uh, you know, it's not going to be the best example. But we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So I'll go ahead and go with the Empower. I'm going to stack the Might on myself, pop this, switch to my Greatsword, and just with the Whirl. As you can see, I'm doing about 5.5k, and you know, depending on the group setup, with more might, you can end up getting, so there are times where I can get even higher than 10. So, you know, it ends up being pretty situational, but uh, yeah, it ends up doing pretty good damage, and so that's pretty much the build, guys. Uh, if you have any comments, if you want to talk about the build, maybe give some suggestions on anything that you might think would be better, that'd be fantastic. Also, make sure to check us out at agonygaming.net, and thanks for watching.